Hello, this is Eric from Gaspel, and in this video, I will show you my journey to understanding continuous slide for video and how I improve, well, at least in my perspective, over the past three years since I started taking these more seriously. In my first try, I unmounted a spotlight from the backyard of my parents, made an extension and adapted it so I could use it as a light stand. This is how it looks. The first thing that you can see is that um, the light is very harsh, the shadows are very harsh, but well, you need to take in consideration that now I know how to expose properly and that really plays a role in these kind of situations. Next, I have my newer bicolor 480 LED panels. I have the combo of two and this is how it looks without a diffuser. And this is the diffuser that I got um, for these uh, panels. This is a specific dimension for these panels because if you get a bigger one, it doesn't fit properly. So this is one of the limitations of this kind of uh, diffusers for these lights. It works really great. And if you can see the exposure is fine, it's good to have some of backlight. So at this point, I learned these uh, advantages of uh, separating myself from the background, but also don't get it like super dark because you want that light depth but uh, you need to have that to in order to make interesting your shot so i mounted here the diffuser and as you can see it changes a little bit the color of my skin because some diffuser sheets affects the color output so i'm checking here exposure because also the the, the diffusion sheet affects the uh, amount of output and this should look pretty much the same as you can see the shadows in my face are more flattering and it's it's better overall the next and the last i got was the godox sl60w this is a 60 watt led uh, unfortunately it's only one color it says it's about 5600 uh, kelvin but it fluctuates depending on the power you're selecting it this time i'm showing you the bowers mount this is like the three little uh, points that make the the adapters and all the soft lights and everything you attach to the lights uh, suitable and it's an, uh, a kind of uh, universal mounting so this is the reflector that came in with the with the light this helps to center the light and also increase the amount of lights so if you want the max lux output from your light you need to use the reflector so here I turn it on and shoot it right into my face. So you can see here, I'm keeping 10% all the time. I'm just exposing based on ISO and uh, aperture in my lens. So this is the Godox uh, SL60W plane, no reflector at 10% with uh, proper exposure. This time I added the reflector at still 10%. I didn't correct the exposure, but as you can see, my skin looks brighter because the, the light gets centered more with this reflector. Now I turn it off the lights behind me so you can see the difference between how much light the reflector does to, my, to the subject in the first plane and then how much the light helps in the background. I place the, uh, the panel uh, uh, diffuser and it got a little bit better, but since it's a very hot light and a little small diffuser, it doesn't get that good. So I walk backwards because this softbox is huge. It's 80 centimeters by 120. And it's also power mount. So at this point, when I got the SL60W, I started just got in a balance mounting different diffusers so this is the first one i got it was pretty big but it was helping so this time i mounted already the softbox so you can see how much of the light it's get absorbed by this softbox it's still at 10 percent i just mounted it into the light and i need to obviously go back and expose properly so the first i trying to uh, expose with aperture and it's getting it's getting bright enough but i say you know it's not enough because i wasn't seeing the zebras that i was looking for for a 41 ire and then i switched to the second base aso in the fx30 which is 2500 and as you can see uh, it looks very bright the background now because those lights were like a 60 70 percent and i need to lower the power of the lights in the background so that's turn off and that's 10 percent in that light and i'm also switching the other one so I don't get like that much of a bright in the background and I still am the focus on the, on the plane. So this is the correct exposure with the softbox. It looks pretty nice. To be honest, it looked pretty nice six, since the 4, 480 LED panel with the softbox, but you improve the 
quality of the shadows. So as you can see here, I exposed correctly again for this softbox. And as you can see, the shadows in my face are very flattering. And also I'm getting some kind of uh, feel light from the side uh, light that I have to, for the background. So it also looks nice. So it's very important to consider having more than one light. Obviously you need only one key light, maybe one hair light and one, maybe one backdrop light. But uh, this is how a shot looks when you only have one light. In this case, since I have a good quality light um, and a good, good quality uh, diffusion box, it looks nice. So here you can see that the exposure is pretty much the same, but it does affect the lights that are in the background. So it's very important to consider that. The next one is the softbox, uh, which is a lantern from a small rig, the RA L65. This is like a big bulb that you attach to your room. The light gets diffused evenly in all the, the room and it depends only in the depth of the of the room, like in the walls, how much of a light it gets. So here are exposing and this is how it looks. I don't have the backlights turned on. I'm about to turn them on and yes, it does help, but it's very important to remember to white balance your lights because at this point the backlights were like a 5600 Kelvin, but it's not very accurate. That's one of the disadvantages of using cheap lights. And now I'm switching to this little Octabox, which is also a small rig. Bowen's mount and I'm changing the lantern. Again, we have the spotlight from the Godox plane. And now we got the other one. So you don't see much of a difference because the backlight is illuminating too much. But here I'm turning them on. And you can see now how the shadow is more limited in the background. I'm still pretty much the same exposure, but I think I'm going to check now. Yeah, I double checked. I move a little bit the aperture just to see how the zebras moved. So I'm trying to nail 41 IRE in S-Log3 in my camera to the middle of the card. So it's about where my face is. I also uh, take one step back, so I got a little bit of a more shadow in my face. I don't like it like too bright. So I turn back on the lights behind me and this is how it looks. Since the lights, I got it like at 30%, it, it, it turned more the background, but it still is a good separation. But as you can see, the whites in the background are different like in the white in my screen, in my skin. I mean, I'm not white white, but you understand the point. So this is how it looks, the spotlight. This is the LED only without a diffuser. This is the LED with the backlight behind of me, so to, so to create a little bit of light depth. This is the SL60W without the reflector. This is the SL60W with the reflector. This is the SL60W with the softbox and the backlight on. This is the softbox and the SL60W only with no backlight. This is the lantern without the lights behind me. And this is the Octabox, only no lights behind me. So that's it pretty much to stay with me. I hope this video helps in some way. And if you're trying to create some kind of a lining scene for your studio, well, I hope this information helps you and helps you get like informed to get whatever you need without making like many iterations like I did. So you can go right into the right point. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.